Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we're looking at how to create very simple and easy slot joints with just a few clicks of the mouse. So we don't have to go through and create a slot per item, we can do it as one and we're going to be going through that in this lesson. Also we're going to be looking at application for that, in this case with aerofoils and some kind of support structure in there and as you can see we've got a different type of join in here. Again, we're only applying this to two objects to allow it to be placed right across here. This goes in union with the videos that I've placed up lately regarding parametric cross sections. So we're looking at that. It also covers a question that I had some time ago regarding waffle structures. So I hope you enjoy the channel and let's have a look at this technique. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So I'm just going to explain the scenario first. I'm in freehand, I've got a new document open and I'm going to come into the SketchUp. I'm going to create a number of items on here. So I'm going on the XY plate and what we're going to do is create, just quickly create some objects that we want to link together. And we're just going to be doing this by using the part and extruding these up. 40 millimeters there. So we've got this object here. If we had a number of other objects, let's say we go back to the sketch and I'm going to create a new sketch again from the top. I'm not going to attach it to anything, so make sure nothing's selected. X, Y plane. And I'm going to create something like this and also strew that as well. and 40 millimeters. So we've got these two blocks here. Now the simplest way to make a join between these is take one extrude, right click, transform it, bring it across and line it up to where you want it to actually sit. We can use the placement for more accuracy if we so desire. So we can come into here into the position because it's not attached to anything and we can use the Y and also the X and the Z to place it into position like so. If we wanted to create a halving joint in here or a slot joint then what we need to do is actually transform one of these, move it up what we're looking to do is move it halfway up. So if these were going to be placed in this kind of arrangement, then we need to transform that along the Z by half the width. So half this extrude, which was 40. So we do this at minus 20. Either this one up or this one down. So we've got that there and all we do is take one, control click the other, come up to part and then we're looking for a boolean operation which is here and use a cut and we get that section taken away there. Then we do the reverse, so we come into the cut, we bring back both the extrudes hiding the original cut like so. So we've got both the extrudes back, these two here, we've hidden the original cut, we're not selecting that, we're just selecting the extrudes inside. And we do the reverse, the one we want to keep, the one we want to remove, and this time we're going to use the cut from the toolbar, make a cut, like so. Now we should have two cuts, and if I transform one, you can see we've got that slot there. And if I select the cut and make it transparent, so come down to the view, looking at the transparency, and bring this up to something like 80. So we can see inside there, 
and then right click transform. We can see how those join up inside. So from that cut, we can see how those join up. So we've got that in there, start join up nicely. The only thing is, if we had loads of these cross sections, say if this was longer, let's just delete these just to bring back the two extrude so we haven't got the cut anymore. And let's come into this extrude here and double click it. And we'll create a longer extrude like so. Hit close. So we've got a nice long extrude now. And we'll take this cross section here. I'm going to duplicate this up a number of times. So we've got the sketch inside. We may also change the sketch as well. So I'm going to use a control C on there and we're going to duplicate up both of these. If I took this one off, what will happen? There'll be a cross reference to the original sketch. So if that sketch changes, then there will be a cross reference to that and all the other extrudes will be the same. If I just hit OK on that, you'll see that. So if I hit OK, Control V and Control V again, come into here. You see the sketch 001 and sketch 001 there. And if I transform these, transform this way and this one, right click, transform this way. You can see that that sketch, this one here, if I change this slightly, let's say let's put a notch on the back like that. And we'll just delete these away. It's just something that I want to show you. And we'll remove the external. Like so. And hit close. You'll see that's gone through all of them there because there's a link back with all these sketches. We copied it from here and we just linked it back to that one. Now, if I delete these, so this is the thing with copying these, you have to be very careful about what you decide to copy. Just delete those. And we've got this extrude here. Control C that. This time, I'm gonna leave that one selected. Hit OK. Control V, Control V. Now we'll transform. Right click, transform. If I change these now, so let's change the last one. And let's take out that section and join these two together like so you'll see that this one has changed, but the others haven't. So just be careful when you're copying these because you can have that cross-reference between the two or you can make them as individual sketches in there. We open this up, you see sketch 003, sketch 002, they're all individual sketches. I'm gonna add a few more strudes just to bring those in. and transform this one. So we've got them all along there. Now, if we wanted to create the halving joint with these or the slot joint with these, then we don't have to click on this one, click on the main one and use a cut like so and bring back that strewed, so this one here and the original, and then do the same, and then repeat with all the other ones. That's not the way to do this. You don't have to do that. Let's get rid of that cut. So we've got all these items here. What I'm going to do is take all of these extrudes, so all these cross sections, leave the beam where it is, go up to part, come down to compound and make compound. So that means these act as one. So press the space bar on that, you can see them disappearing. 
Now what we do is take the beam, this one here, control click the compound, just selecting one, the compound selected over here. That's part, boolean, cut. And you can see that's taken across there. Absolutely fine. Come back into the cut and we've got to do the reverse. So I bring back the compound, bring back the extrude, hide the cut because we don't want to see that. So we've just got our object here. So you can see pressing spacebar on that compound brings that in and out of existence. And now what we do is take not the extrude, but the compound, because we're doing the reverse, the one we want to keep. Control click the one we want to extrude and use the cutting tool. And those are in there. You can bring back both cuts now and right click, transform and move these. And you can see we've got those slots going all the way through there with just a couple of clicks. These are parametric as well, so we can come into the compound, we can come into one of the extrudes, let's take this one here, and we'll lengthen this one, hit close, and you can see this one has lengthened. So we're fully parametric there. We can change these individually, but that's how to actually get those done very quickly, rather than taking the individual ones and trying to create this slot for all of these. So this is an application what we could use this for. So we've got a number of profiles of a wing and I want to create some kind of support across this. So I'm going to sketch upon one of these profiles. Let's come upon Sketcher, use a sketch using flat face and I'm just going to place just something simple in here. Just rectangle. It's up to you what you want to use or how you want to use this application. I'm just going to use a rectangle in there. Our sketch is sitting here. These are all individual profiles so you can see all these are strews here. These are all the profiles. Select the sketch. Come over to the part workbench. I select that sketch and do the extrude. And we're going to go something like 300 millimeters. We can make sure we go along the right plane as well. So let's have a look at the plane. So we're looking to go along this way, which is the X plane. And hit OK. That's gone all the way through there. So we have our support extrude. And we have each of the profiles, which I'm not going to rename at the moment. So what do we do? Well, if we've got this extrude, it's going all the way along here. We can transform this to the position where we want. Let's say something like that. Or we'll move it up and down how we see fit. This could be a curve if we so desire. It's up to you. And what we need to do is bring all these profiles together as one object or one compound object. So select either the last one or the first one and using the shift, because these are all in line, you can see them all in line here and that's true there. So I've select one, press the shift, come down to the last one, this one here. Cut to the part, compound, make compound. Now create them as one object. So I'll rename this to profile compound. And then it's a case of taking profile compound, selecting that, or just selecting one of these because it's all one object. So this is the one you want to keep. Control selecting the one that you want to remove, this one, or we'll select it from here, and use the cut part or part boolean cut. So that's cut through there. Now what we've got to remember is that because we've used these extrudes in the profile and this supporting extrude here. Then if we move this extrude, so if I transform this, say here, then that hole will also move. So if I press the space bar, you can see that has now cut into the top. Now, if we wanted to, 
Let's transform that again. We can transform it in it why it's invisible as well. Let's come down. Okay, that. If we wanted to use that extrude again to say put a slot in, so move it down and slot this in here, then what we need to do is bring this back. Click on the support extrude, control C, and you can see them all in here. I'm just going to select this support extrude so I don't need any of this down here. Hit OK. Control V, let's paste it in here. So now we've got, if I hide this support extrude, we've got a separate object. Because if I start moving this object, then we're going to get into trouble. So let's hide this original extrude. And this is the one I'm going to create the slot with. So I can right click, transform this down, bring it down here, hit OK. You can see the original ones there and new ones here. I hide the support extrude, the original. Now we've got that moved down here. Then I can create the slots for this one. So I can click on this one, the one that I want to keep, the one that I want to remove, which would be the cut, the one with the holes in, and use make a cut. And you can see we've got our object here with those cuts going through. So you can see them there. I've got this extra face here, but that doesn't matter. If I want to do it, I can click on the cut and use a refine in here to true. That just cleans that up like so. So we've got our support inside there. We've got our original cut as well. Like so we've, so we've got these two objects in here. We can export these out individually as STL files. So this one here and this one here by clicking on them. Going to File, Export, and this is the wing. And this one here is a sport. So now I can just hide these and show you what's been exported. So let's hide all of these so we don't see anything. File, import, bring in the wing. See the wing there? If the hole's going through, file, import, the support and just hide that wing. And we can see that support there. So that shows you how we can quickly create these slot joints for your projects that have any ribbons or bulkheads or some kind of sections that you need to slot together. Hope you found that useful, hope you found that interesting, and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire, and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.